Hey there, hey, hi, how are you? So today I'm going to show you something that is going to completely change the way that you're looking at your Android smartphone. And it's right here on my laptop, so I mean, take a look for yourself. It's a photo of a trash can. Bear with me. Take a look at this photo, and now take a look at this photo. Do you see the difference? It's huge, which is weird because both of these photos were taken on the same day, in the same exact conditions, both of these photos are unedited, and both of these photos were taken on my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. So what is the difference here? So the difference here is that one of the photos was taken with the native camera app, and the other one was taken with the Google Pixel camera app that was ported to the Samsung S9 Plus. And today I'm gonna show you how you can get this app for yourself, for your Android smartphone, and then I'm gonna tell you why this app is so good, I think every Android user should have it. So while I'm adjusting the camera, go down into the description below and click on the link. It will take you to this website. And at first glance, this website might, might seem overwhelming because there's a bunch of different versions of the same app. But it doesn't have to be overwhelming. Read the help section of the website and it will help you to I please get the feel where you need to be looking for the right version of this app for your smartphone. It took me about 20 minutes to get the right version for the Samsung S9 Plus and I don't think you will have any troubles, it's just trial and error. Download it, try to install it, see if it works, if it doesn't, try another one. Now once you get the app running, it's going to feel like you have a completely new smartphone because you see, my previous phone, the iPhone 6, I was using the camera app all the time because it was really good, even though it was a five-year-old smartphone, when I switched to the S9, I still liked the photos from the iPhone 6. Now, with the Samsung S9 Plus, it's really inconsistent, so I started to use the camera app less and less. So once I got this Pixel app, I mean, it felt like I had a new smartphone, and it was awesome. So let me just pull up all of the photos that I took. Oh yeah, by the way, I took a bunch of sample shots with the native app and the Pixel app. So if you want to see them full resolution, I will leave a link down in, below, in the description below so you can download all of them full res, unedited, and check out the differences for yourselves. But anyway, let's start with the good stuff, with the good stuff that comes with this app. And I feel a lot of these things that I'm going to be talking about, it's a huge problem not only for Samsung smartphones, but also for many other Android smartphones. Well, pretty much if you don't have a Google Pixel phone, your Android smartphone takes crappy photos compared to the iPhone and Google Pixel. It's just how it is. Well, it's, it would actually be the perfect time to explain why. So if you don't know why this is, it's because there are two things you need to take a photo. You need the hardware and you need software. So hardware would be the camera sensor and the camera's lens and the software would be the camera's application. Now iPhones do a great job of image processing. This is when your phone translates the information from the camera sensor to an actual image. Google, they created the camera app so that it would do a better job at image processing. So anyway, um, let, let's, let's look at some photos. So first of all, we have this photo of a leaf right here. Now, the biggest problem, once I got the S9 Plus was, well, the photos looked weird. And it was painful to look at those photos. So imagine if you take a normal photo and then just over sharpen it. It kind of hurts your, well, it doesn't really hurt your eyes. It just, it, it, it's hard to look at. And this leaf is a perfect example of over sharpening. At first glance, you might even not understand what's going on here, why the picture looks kind of off. I mean, if you compare it to the Google Pixel photo, it just looks way better. Uh, so, but w once you zoom in to both of these shots, you can see that the Samsung's picture, there's just a lot of over sharpening. You can see that on the Google Pixel, there's no over sharpening. The over sharpening is really noticeable also in this photo. You might better understand what I'm talking about. It is the same thing. At first, you look at it and it's difficult to look at, but you don't know why. But once you zoom in, you will see that you don't get tree branches. You don't get to see the tree branches in both of these photos clearly. But in the Samsung native app, what it does, it just, it just takes the details and always sharpens them. That's why it looks so weird. That's why it's difficult to look at these photos. That's weird because the next thing that we're going to talk about is actually the opposite of over sharpening, which is this weird smoothening that's happening with photos. And I mean, it's it's so bizarre. On like the details are over sharpened, 
but then you take a look at the photo and you'll see like there's this smearing there's this like a blur over the photo like take a look at this shot there's if you look at my face and if you look at the jacket you can see that there's there's kind of there's no detail there it, it looks weird again it looks weird it's just the opposite of the over sharpening you can see that on my face it just looks smeared out and that's not with the beauty fil beauty filter on it's just it's how it is when you take a photo let me sh let me show you another one now i think this is a really good example of this weird smoothening effect that's going on as you can see there's my camera and i was taking photos outside lovely day to take photos and you can just see that the google pixel app it just does a way better job of capturing the image as it is. As you can see, the Samsung native app, it just smoothens out. Take a look at the grip. There's barely any details there. Take a look at the plastic around the LCD screen. It doesn't look like that in real life. It looks smeared out. It's weird. And I don't like that. I understand why people are making fun of Android users for taking photos with Android smartphones. I mean, I mean, the, the, the difference is just undeniable here. Okay, moving on, next up are the inconsistencies that I was talking about. So, uh, you never knew if you're going to get a decent photo or if the photo is going to look like crap from your uh, S Pen Plus. Well, at least that's well, that, that was in my case. So take a look at these two shots. Both of them were taken with my S9 Plus, which, well, you know the drill. Uh, and as you can see, the, in these conditions, they don't look that different because, I mean, sometimes the native camera app actually did a decent job of processing the image. But then take a look at this. These photos were taken just seconds apart from each other. And all I did was change the angle of the camera and Samsung was back at it again with their weird shenanigans. Over sharpened details and weird smearing effect, which I really do not understand. Okay, so next thing is, well, um, pretty much one of the biggest things why you would want to get this app is the portrait mode, which is completely awesome. I mean, the uh, stock portrait mode on the native camera app, it's horrible, it's unusable, and it's just bad. Take a look. Uh, this was shot with the Samsung's native camera app, and, well, it does quite a decent job of separating the uh, subject that is in focus from the background, uh, take a look at my beard, there's just no details there. And again, the smearing that I was talking about, the blurriness, it's just horrible, it's horrible. And now take a look at the Pixels app. I mean, this looks way better. The difference, of course, is that, well, first of all, uh, on the native app, you can do portrait mode only with the telephoto lens. With the Pixel, you can do portrait mode, but only with the wide angle lens. And I'm gonna talk about this in the bad things section about this camera app. But for now, the good part is that, I mean, it just does a way better job. Look at my face. Again, there's just way more detail in the beard and also on the sweater. Now, also, other, other good things about this app is, well, I was taking a lot of photos and I tried to push the camera into these weird lighting situations. So first of all, the HDR, it just looks, it just works way better than the stock HDR, the stock cameras HDR. I mean, take a look at these photos and you can see the sun is shining directly into the lens and the Pixels app does a way better job of uh, exposing both the highlights and the shadows. That's what's HDR. And here's another shot which clearly shows HDR, which, uh, it's just way better on the Pixel app than on the native one. Now take a look at this car. So um, the conditions were just horrible. Like, there was barely any light. Uh, and Pixel app, well, it handled the situation well. And then there's Samsung, which just face palmed into the dirt. It looks like it's the whole focus is missed because, I mean, take a look at the shelf. No details whatsoever. Take a look at the, the wheels of the car. No details whatsoever. You're, you get the point. And as I said, there is a bunch of photos that I took that you can go and check out full res uh, if you want to, because I'm not showing all of the shots that I took, uh, because there's like 30, 40 pictures. So you kind of get it. The Pixel app does a way better job than the native one. So what's the catch? What do you have to sacrifice to use this app? Well, actually, there are quite a few things you need to be well, you need to consider them before actually using this app. So first of all, uh, on this particular app, 
Uh, I couldn't get the telephoto lens to work. It just did not recognize the telephoto lens, which is not a big deal for me. The second thing is, well, the constant crashing. The, let, let me just put it lightly. There is not constant crashing, but if you tweak with the settings, you will get the app to crash. And honestly, one time, the app crashed so badly, I uninstalled it and reinstalled it and it still didn't work. The only way I got it to work was when I completely uninstalled the app, I installed a completely different version of the same app and then uninstalled that and reinstalled the working version of this app and only then it started to work again. Another thing which might be a big deal is that I couldn't take a photo with the flash because it just froze up and it didn't work. So in conclusion, uh, it all depends on what which version of the app you land on, what kind of phone you have, and it all depends on what you're willing to sacrifice to get decent photos. Anyways, I hope you learned something, I hope I helped you to get this app, and I hope I will see you next time when I'm posting a video, so make sure you subscribe. And I don't know, share this with a friend, share, send this video to a friend that has an Android smartphone and his photos look horrible.